welcome uh, to the discussion on forest preserves, particularly Psalm Woods and Psalm Prairie in Northbrook. Uh, I'm Doug Gerleman. I uh, started the Go Green North Northbrook uh, group uh, last about a year ago. It was Earth Day of last year. I went around the Village Green uh, talking to the people and got them to sign up to create a community of people who wanted to improve environmental conditions around the village. Um, and we've been pretty effective. So far we have 100 members of Go Green Northbrook, people who live or work in Northbrook. Uh, we have uh, a website, a Facebook page, and a blog. If you want to check us out more, go to gogreennorthbrook.org and you can see the different activities that we have. We have nine teams of people working on nine different projects. And you can find out about the details about those programs as well as a schedule of when we do meet. So please uh, join us sometime and bring your friends. Um, the broad, the uh, presentation tonight is going to be televised by uh, Glenbrook North uh, High School. We have a student, Graham Cohen, that's uh, doing the recording. So thank you very much, uh, Graham. And this evening, we have members of the uh, Go Green Northbrook Forest Education Team who are going to tell us a little bit about the life, plant and animal life, in Psalm Woods and Psalm Prairie, uh, how we can make the, uh, these prairies uh, healthier, um, and bring in even more native species of plants and animals. And then we're going to also be covering why it should be important to us. How do we feel more connected to the forest preserves instead of just driving down Dundee Road and seeing no cars coming out of these areas? We should, should be thinking about what those areas offer for us itself. Uh, Steve Packard is the leader of the forest education team. And I'll do a very brief introduction of Steve, and uh, then he'll introduce uh, Gene or any other speakers that happen to come in. Um, Steve was the founding director of the Chicago Region Audubon Society. Yeah, he was a director of the Illinois chapter of uh, Nature Conservancy. Uh, he's a, uh, an instructor, a teacher over at Northwestern Mus University and uh, is a noted expert in restoring prairies and oak woodlands. So please help me welcome Steve Packard. Uh, what a great turnout. Thanks for coming on a freezing night. The, uh, we must have the cream of the crop of Go Green Northbrook and people who care about forest preserves. It's also great to see a bunch of people in the audience that have been out in the forest preserve helping us do the work, uh, which is great. This, uh, and I recommend if you want to skittle over and get closer for the slide part, if you want to get see the slides. Uh, this is what Northbrook looked like for thousands of years. Uh, not everyone knows Northbrook was named after the north branch of the Chicago River. Uh, there's a river going along, and on the west side of the river, it was prairie all the way to the Des Plaines and Wheeling. On the right side, there was oak savanna and oak woodland, and we'll look at all of them. Uh, here's a view of the Somme Forest Preserves today. Uh, and uh, it's sort of fun to note, I think, uh, here's the library. Here, we're here. Uh, there's the train station, and right up uh, there is Soam Woods. You can actually see Soam Woods from the train station. Uh, look north. You can see the cars going back and forth on Dundee Road. That means you can also see the uh, trees in the forest preserve. But along the edges, you don't, oh. Uh, Here's, an, here's the interior. This is Somme Prairie. The, uh, according to one uh, uh, bit of research, the finest or one of the very finest bits of prairie that survives in the state. Here's the oak woodland uh, in uh, Somme, uh, north of Dundee, west of Waukegan. Uh, 
According to a forest preserve study, the highest quality woodland in the Cook County forest preserves and there are 68,000 acres. Uh, but here's what most of us see from the edge. This is the, this is the parking lot up, up on Waukegan, the edge of the forest preserves. Uh, in the fall, the bright colored trees are white oaks. The whole bottom, all that green, is uh, a killer invasive plant, is a very serious problem, and it crowds out everything. Here, back in the forest preserve, this is what's happened to our oak woods. That big old tree is an ancient oak, uh, bur oak probably. Uh, some of these trees old enough that the Indians walked under them. The passenger pigeons landed on their branches. Uh, the bison and the mountain lion walked by them. They're hundreds of, many hundreds of year old trees. But the entire understory is completely without oak reproduction or much of anything else. Uh, here's a typical old tree, it's dead. But uh, if you carefully look around the bottom, all you can find is baby European buckthorn coming up. This tree has fallen over. Uh, later in the slideshow, you'll see the um, wonderful richness of plants and animals that make up a healthy ecosystem. But much of it, when we started, and we started on this in the 1970s, and have been working on it ever since, uh, much of it looked like this. Uh, here is an area just north of Dundee. We had a controlled burn. The controlled burn killed the little buckthorns, but still there's not much else happening. And what we found we needed to do was go hither and yon and find the rare plants that once made up the understory of the ecosystem. Picked them, threw them around, and pretty soon uh, up came an ecosystem, not exactly meadow in a can, not immediately, but after, but, but after a number of years, this is what that uh, woodland looked like that had been so empty. Uh, here's what it looks like later in the summer, and it, uh, each week during the year, uh, new uh, plants and new animals appear. This is uh, uh, some woods looking in late 1970s, looking from uh, Waukegan Road. Uh, Off-road vehicles were coming in, uh, tearing the place up. Uh, the uh, Civic Foundation provided some uh, fencing that helped to uh, keep the uh, problem vehicles out. But most of what was in the open area was like what we see here. Uh, you may not know your plants, uh, but these are all European plants. These are pasture grasses, and uh, the white one is carrot that grows where uh, there was overgrazing. Uh, the native ecosystem was hardly to be found. Uh, here's what it uh, looks like in early spring after many years of hard work. Uh, here's what it looks like in summer after many years of hard work. There are 460 species of native plants now in Soam Prairie Grove, a, uh, a huge diversity. There are a few places like that that remain in the Midwest, almost all of them rare. Um, here's how we did it. And this was very much a citizen project for many years. Now the Forest Preserve is putting resources into it too. But uh, families came out, uh, schools came out, Many high schools uh, co come out these days, and colleges. Uh, these people are cutting buckthorn, cutting brush, and those bags are filled with rare seeds that were gathered all fall, and the rakes there to rake them in. Uh, in the fall and winter, we cut brush and burn it up in brush piles. In the summer, we find uh, a plants that the average person might think looked just great, but are what are called invasives, which are the sort of the malignancy, almost the ecosystem cancer. They proliferate so much that they kill off everything else. So these we pull up. In the fall then, we start gathering seeds. Uh, this is, uh, this is not an advertisement. There are so many different things. If anybody wants to do, there, uh, we can talk about that later. But one thing many people like to do, it's 
a peaceful and meditative, come out in the fall and help uh, learn to recognize rare seeds and gather them. Uh, then once we've got them gathered, uh, we uh, rub them through screens to break them up. We don't want whole heads falling in the same place. Uh, um, but there are whole, these whole series of processes that we've learned as we've figured out how to do ecosystem restoration. Then either in the late fall or early spring, uh, half to a third of the site is burned every year. And these uh, fires, which uh, some people were du dubious about, uh, have been going on every year since the 70s. There's never been a problem. Uh, it's easy to control them if you have the right equipment and good people and you know what you're doing. Uh, then back to winter again, and every winter we cut the brush and uh, have adventures. This, uh, again, is an ecosystem shot. Uh, the richness of the plant material here uh, is obvious to the eye, but this is science. Uh, each of these bars on the left shows floristic quality or just the number of native species in random sample plots and managed compared to unmanaged. This is the uh, woodland re under restoration compared to parts that aren't under restoration. The blue is the prairies. This is what's being restored compared to what's not. Uh, um, many hundred percent increases. On the other hand, we had problems. The first one, 1992, there was a huge buildup of white-tailed deer. Uh, we love and respect white-tailed deer, but uh, too many of them is, is, uh, is a severe prog problem for the ecosystem. Our second setback, and we'll show graphs of these, our second setback was in 1996 when a bizarre expose in the Sun Times said, we've discovered these people, they're cutting trees down, they're burning. This is sh shocking. And Cook Lake and DuPage counties, uh, the boards said, well, we, this is controversial. We'll have to look into this. Uh, Lake and DuPage work resumed within a few months. Uh, but because of some complex neighborhood politics in Chicago, the North Branch region was one of the last to get started again. And in Vestal Grove, which I have data for, it was about seven years where the work was suspended. On the other hand, that suspension of seven years gave us an important opportunity to study what happens to an ecosystem when it's not being taken care of. So here we have in the green, uh, uh, this is quality vegetation. This is, these are the types of plants uh, this represents how much there was in the sample plots. Uh, from 1986, every two years, through 2007. And uh, the red line is invasive, weedy, problem species. And you can see what happened when the restoration started the good stuff started doing better. The bad stuff started doing worse. When the 